So say you have a stream of integers typically measurements coming in your system. Most of these measurements have low variance which means they mostly operate in the steady state. Sometime or the other you might see aberrations basically anomalies happening in your system. Now the problem statement is as a database as a time series database how do I store this stream of integers as efficiently as possible. Now some examples of measurements could be our hardware metrics like average CPU utilization or free memory available or API response time, database query latencies and all. Most of them, most of them typically operate in a steady state while you might see some aberrations here and there. So a naive way, a naive way to store an integer is to store an integer like an integer on the disk. For example, if I take a 64 bit integer which takes up 8 bytes, when I store 1 million such data points on my disk, let's say for a particular metric, I am getting 1 million data points and I want to store it on the disk. 1 million multiplied by 8 byte for each data point, it would require me 8 MB of space, which is pretty decent. Right? Now, how can we store this better? Now, this is where, say the numbers, let me take a concrete example to help you understand. So, let's say we take the numbers as 10,000, 10,005, 10,007, 10,009, 10,011. Now, here you can see the numbers are slightly larger. But the variance is low. The variance is if the number is 10,000, the variance is relatively low. So from 10,000 to 10,005, 7, 9, 11, 15, 19, 22 and so on and so forth. So low variance, large number of numbers that we are storing. So instead of storing actual numbers, what if we store the delta between the values? For example, I store the first number as is. And then while storing the second number, instead of storing the second number, I store second number minus first number on the disk. Then third number minus second number would be the next number. Fourth number minus third number would be the next number. So instead of storing 10,000, 10,005, 7, 10,009, 10,011, so on and so forth, I store 10,000, 5, 2, 2, 2, 4, 4, 3, and so on and so forth. Now if you look carefully, if this series has n elements or n data points, your smaller, relatively smaller representation will also have n numbers. So we are not reducing the number of data points. So we are not losing any data. We are just we are just storing a smaller value. We are just storing the delta. Now here you can see a classic trade-off happening. You get some, you lose some. What are you gaining? You are representing the exact same series with smaller numbers. You are gaining it. But what are you losing? When you retrieve or when you access, you would have to reconstruct the original number by going through it. Right? Now you get some, you lose some, you get storage efficiency, but while extensive, but while accessing it, you would have to leverage your CPU to recompute the original number. So classic trade-off that we are going for. So if we store the new numbers here, this series, are we really gaining something? Because if you look carefully, n numbers in original series, n numbers in the deltas that we are storing, right? And if we store these numbers as integers, like as 8 byte integers, then we are not really improving on storage. Because although we converted from this to this, if we store each of this integer as 8 bytes, we are not really storing or we are not really saving any space because that would also have 1 million data points. Each one being an integer, we are still taking up 8 MB of space. So are we storing it in an efficient way? Although we have reduced the number, are we really reducing the storage space? Which is where, what do we do? Is instead of storing integers as integers, we encode integers into something called as variable length integer encoding. Now, I already have a very detailed video, the previous video to this, at this topic. If you are interested, do check out, but I'll give you a quick gist of it. So, what are variable length integer encoding? It helps you encode integers with variable length. So, you are not giving a fixed width to an integer, let's say 4 bytes or 8 bytes. You say that the length of my integer is variable. And one simple way to implement this is, let's say, for example, if I want to represent the number 292, the binary representation of this number is 100100100. Right? So instead of storing this entire number 292 into 8 bytes, what do I do? I take up 7 bits and store it in 1 byte. Then because there are some bits left, I mark the, mac the most significant bit as 1, mark as continuation bit. So which means I have to read one more byte. And in this byte, I would store the remaining two bits. One zero, rest all zero. And because there is no more bits left, I set it to zero. So this way, it's a simple continuation-based bit-based 
variable length integer encoding scheme i have a very detailed video on it with a with a demonstration and code highly recommend you to check it out but this is how you store and you represent a number like a big number like 292 not in 4 bytes not in 8 bytes but just in 2 bytes so you save a ton of space and that's the advantage that you get right okay so now let's now that we know that we can save a bunch of space by storing this number in in relatively fewer bytes using variable and integer encoding what if we store the compressed or the delta encoded stream using variable and integer encoding so what do we do we'll go through the code and we'll and i'll demonstrate you the amount of storage that we save and the way we are storing the data so if we store 1 million numbers when raw form 1 million numbers each number being 64 bit long integer it would take up 8 mb we would see that Second, uh, we would see the impact of doing variable length integer encoding without doing delta compression. If we do not do any delta compression and just store these numbers on the disk, we uh, from 8 MB of storage we reduce it to 3 MB, and then we apply delta uh, encoding on this. We reduce it to even 1 MB. So from 8 MB we are going directly to 1 MB by using variable length integer encoding plus delta compression. Right? So we'll go through the code and look at it. from a very hands on perspective so let me quickly switch to the code so that i can show you a very quick demonstration of it now this is a code base that i am maintaining where i am sharing everything about the core database concepts like last time i covered variable length integer encoding today i am covering delta so this is the code base that i am linking it in the description down below it would have implementations of various really fundamental database concepts that you can explore fork the repo star the repo if you find it helpful but do implement it on your own whenever you find time this is for your reference so go check that out so here i have a package called delta in which i have a main file a main test file which basically does the thing that i told so what we are doing is the total number of numbers we are playing with is basically 1 million six zeros after one and what we are doing is we are storing a slice of integers on the disk so i have this utility function which basically opens the file and it encodes the integer and stores it on the disk right now the way it encodes it encodes in variable length integer encoding again i would highly recommend you to refer the video to understand how this is implemented a bit of really small amount of bit manipulations we need to do but nothing major over here so this function is basically takes a slice of it takes an array of integers and dumps it onto the disk now what do what we do is to ensure that we have a low variance i populated my numbers such that i've created an array of total numbers which means 1 1 million entries in this array each entry is the way we are populating this is we created this total numbers the way we are populating the numbers is we started with 10000 and the next number will be a random number with a difference of 5 so from 0 to 5 i'll pick a random number and creating the next number out of it so this way we would have an array of 1 million random integers with low variance although they are monotonically increasing but the concept remains the same the variance is relatively low then we persist it onto the disk as is the raw numbers that we have we persist it onto the disk as is and the second time what we do is we persist it another file called numbers_variant where we instead of storing integers as is we encode it with variable and integer encoding and store so no compression only variable and integer encoding we store it over here this is a flag that triggers if i want to encode it or not i can show you that should variant if it's variant then i encode it in variant otherwise i put u int 64 as is this is the if else that we have now that we have it the third thing that we do is while i run this uh we can quick because it might take 20 odd seconds to run copy paste okay and then we create a new array which contains the delta right so we are now compressing it with delta encoding we have the same length of array we take the same u int 64 obviously you can reduce the size in memory but it's okay uh you take delta you copy the first number as is the ith number is the or from original array the difference between the two number numbers of 5 minus number of 5 minus 1 and we keep on storing it once we have the numbers delta as a as a as a compressed format we store it over here in numbers underscore delta dot that right now let's look at the let's look at this thing uh the results so wc minus c 
number star. Now, if you look carefully, you can see the numbers underscore raw file. Now, numbers underscore raw file contains 8 million bytes. Obviously, u int 64, 1 million numbers, 64 bit integer, 8 byte into 1 million entries, 8 MB. Right? Then, if I store numbers as just variable and integer encoding without delta compression, what we are doing is we are just storing the smallest number of bits required to represent that number using variable and integer encoding. The size from 8 MB reduced to 3 MB. That's a significant saving just by using variable and integer encoding. Now on top of it, when we apply delta encoding, where we first take the delta, where we first create the delta and then we store it as variable and integer encoding. <coughs> Sorry. We require only 1 MB of space. And that's a pretty awesome saving. So from 8 MB of raw to 3 MB using variant to 1 MB using variant and delta encoding. Now that is the magic or that is the power of you get a really high degree of compression even without losing any sort of data point. You are still keeping all n data points as is but storing it in the bare minimum amount of space and that's pretty awesome. I would highly recommend you to check this repository out, code this thing out to get a deeper understanding. But I'll link this repository for your reference in the description down below. Again, highly recommend you to check this out. Now you see the benefit that we got using Delta encoding. Now there is one more case where what if the deltas that you got, what if they are relatively larger number? Oh, sorry, they are relatively ha, correct. The deltas are relatively larger number. So although there is low variance, but the delta between the two numbers are large. Then in that case, what happens is you not you don't get enough benefit. So what you can do, you can do delta of delta. So for example, if your delta of let's say you have a source array, and then when you do delta compression, all the deltas are in the range of 10,000, 10,005, 10,010, 10,100, something like that. Right. So this is relatively larger number. What if you do delta of this delta of delta in that case, the variance of deltas because the variance of deltas is small, it would take up really small space like one, two, three, four, something like that. Right. So there is a chance that if your deltas are larger, you can go for delta of delta compression and a lot of databases actually use that. For example, MongoDB uses like almost all databases that go, that offer time series capabilities, they all leverage delta encoding in some or the other format, right? Now MongoDB uses it, AWS Redshift uses it, Facebook Gorilla Database uses it. Now wherever you see storing a stream of integers, this should be an intuition that, hey, can we store the deltas of it to save space? And obviously there are many more algorithms like this, but this is the easiest win possible in most cases, right? And yeah. This is all what I wanted to cover as part of this, as part of my database fundamental series. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.